where we help small businesses solve big problems. Today, we have an amazing guest, one of my favorite entrepreneurs ever. Uh, sorry for anybody else who may be jealous, but one of my favorite entrepreneurs, speakers, motivational people, a guy just doing the do, walking the walk, Mr. Elliot Eddy of DM Media. Hello, Elliot. How are you? Oh, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for letting me be on your show with you. That means that I officially rock. <laughs> oh, yes, you do, sir. <laughs> yes, you do. Look, it's so funny. I, I, I was so excited to have you up here because we, we go way back, way back. I remember yeah. having a little speakers event. I thought I was doing something a few years <laughs> back. And I'm telling you, I had like one, one guest and you still rock the house like you had an audience of 100, 300, 500 people. So I remember you were with me back then. And look at us, how, how far we have come. I know, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's been incredible. It's been an incredible journey, but I've seen you. You've been doing your thing, stomping I'm with the trying. big dogs for years now. I, I'm, I'm telling you, trying. it's impressive. I got to catch up to you, man. I, every time <laughs> I try to do a little something, I look on social media and I'm like, oh, he's been featured where? He's doing what? He got an award? I'm like, wow. I, oh my gosh. I'm, I'm so proud of you. And I just feel so humble and blessed that you're even having, that you're even available to, to come hang with little old me. But I want my audience to get a chance to, to see the, the lovely guy that you are. So do please introduce yourself to my audience. Tell us a little bit about who Mr. Elliot Eddy is. Absolutely. Um, well, my name is Elliot Eddy. I am originally from the Bronx. I live in Virginia right now, Central Virginia, right around the Richmond area in Henrico. I would classify myself as a serial entrepreneur, uh, just meaning that, you know, I am entrepreneurship. I just love the idea of creating value. I love to be creative. I love to, you know, just see things that are out there that, you know, are possible. You know, to me, one of my favorite qu quotes are, I love the possibilities, you know, so mm -hmm. I'm one of those that if I see something out there that's, that I think is interesting and I see that it's providing value and it can help people uh, and I'm interested in it, I'm going to put my foot in the water and I'm going to wade around in there and, you know, see if I can make it do uh, some incredible things. Okay, that's amazing. I love it. You're a go-getter. I love it. I love it. So I just have to know, because back when I first met you, you had a different brand name. So now you are DM Media. I like the sound of that. It sounds official. So what is DM Media? Well, actually, DM Media is my C corporation. So it's an umbrella corporation that houses all of the different businesses that I have. Uh, my brand is EE e. Speaks. That's what I do a lot of my business under. That's what my speaking uh, business is under. That's what some of my inventions, some of my, in my board games, everything I do with entrepreneurship, the uh, the the workshops is all under that branded EE e. Speaks. But DM Media, you know, I just structured, I went from being an entrepreneur to a business owner to a corporate uh, CEO chairman. So I just structured a corporation and then I put divisions underneath it. So, you know, you have DM Media, but DM Media owns uh, superior taxes. It owns the entrepreneur game. It owns E Speak Speaking Company. It owns P and E Realty. So that's really what it is. It's just basically a corporate a corporate umbrella. It just means that you're up here doing big things, okay? You know, you know, you know. Yeah, I, yeah. You know, I can get. It was nothing. He said, and it owns this, and it owns that, and this, and that. I was sitting there trying to think. I was like, inventor, speaker, workshops. <laughs> what was that? I was like, what else he throwing in there? Everything but the kitchen sink. So you're the. So when I when I have somebody come to me and they're like, I need a guy. It's like, oh, I got a guy because apparently you do everything. I love it. I do a lot of things. I do a lot of things. You know, for a long time. Yeah. They, say, they say you need multiple streams of income, so you just have a very diverse portfolio, my man. That is yes. awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that is awesome. So 
obviously you haven't been an entrepreneur your whole life. You, you were probably an entrepreneur on the inside, but you hadn't had businesses your whole life. So what is your why? Why did you get into being an entrepreneur, a businessman? Uh, please do tell us, because it's always interesting to find out why people even give up their nine to fives to pursue their passion. You know, it's interesting. So there's there's two parts to that. So as a young child, there was a part of me who uh, always saw things and, and, you know, you wanted things, but people weren't, when I was growing up, people weren't as forthcoming with information. Uh, sometimes when you grow up and, you know, I grew up in the Bronx during a time when there was not a whole lot of money rolling around, you know, right across the street from the project, you know, just that, that same story of trying to overcome, you know, a uh, a depressed area and trying to become somebody, you know, try to do something outside of that. And there wasn't a lot of help. So the first thing that I said when, when I was a child is when I get up there or when I get older, you know, I'm going to do something to help people. That was a seed that I planted in my head that I didn't know at the time. As I got older into my teenage years, I grew up, you know, I grew pretty tall. Oh, so I'm about six four, you know, two hundred plus pounds. And the thing was, when I was when I was in my in my teenage years, most people who looked at me, they looked at me and saw a pair of hands. You know, they didn't see the mind. You know, they didn't see that I had a lot of power up here. They just saw a big dude that I can make. You know, I can make go do a you know labor, or you can be a security guard. So I was never able to get those real good jobs, like they used to tell you, the one with the benefits and all that in the corporate office with the air condition. You know, I was outside in the heat securing something or picking something up uh, and then you know so it was during those years that I sort of defined to myself and I said you know what I need to be I need to do something else you know I need to be able to be compensated based on what I bring to the table but more so you know there's a lot more to me I have a brain and there's a lot that I can offer and I just can't find jobs out here that'll let me do those things or pay me you know I was stuck in like that eight nine dollars an hour type job uh, so when, you know, those two things, those two things combined, as I got even older, and I realized, you know, uh, you have your jobs, but then there are also talents and skills that you have. And sometimes we don't really go after those, you know, sometimes they're just thoughts and ideas in our mind and we'll say, hey, that's a nice idea, but somebody else, but somebody else to do. But then I started thinking along the lines, well, if I'm really going to be able to, you know, to realize to have the type of life I want, if I want, if I want to do the things that I see people doing on TV, then, you know, maybe I should take a chance on myself. You know, maybe I should try something, you know, try some of my talents. And I went out there and did that and failed miserably. Uh, but uh, I never gave up because I always believed that, you know, there was a lot more to me than just what people were seeing, you know. I saw a lot more to myself. So it just made me fight to try to find out something that I can do, uh, that I could bring to the table, something that I can do and create, you know, create my own, create my own economy, create my own way of life, you know, just create something special that wouldn't have me beholden to other people uh, for what they thought I was worth. And, That's you know, amazing. eventually that turned into an entrepreneur mindset. And then later I found out that I was an entrepreneur. Uh, as I was doing it. But that's really how I got into it. It was just, you know, trying to, uh, really trying to realize, you know, who I was and, and realize my potential. Awesome. I, I love that you said you wanted to take a chance on yourself. Uh, oftentimes mm -hmm. we let the world and the way they see us dictate how we are and our limitations. And you decided to just break through all that and change your mindset and take a chance on yourself. I think that that's a, that's a tip of wisdom right there. So now that you have all these different um, arenas and different types of uh, smaller companies under your uh, one main company, who is your general target audience? I'm sure there's different target audiences for each one, but in general, who do you serve with your businesses and products? You know, most of my businesses are service-based. So, you know, when I'm doing editing or when I'm doing taxes, that's service-based. So I'm servicing, you know, a particular industry. But the majority of my businesses are really toward the public. It's really toward those people who are who have talent and is that uh, that need that extra nudge. So, you know, when you look at uh, things that I create, like a board game, things that I do, like my workshops, things that I do, uh, like the uh, virtual training programs. You know, these things are really me showing other people that they have, you know, that are similar to myself, that they have the talents, they have skills, because I want people to realize who they are. I want them to realize their fullest potential, no matter who it is. You know, I hear somebody starting a business. I'm excited for them because I know the possibilities are endless, you know, as long as they stick with it. So my general, my general audience is anyone 
who is interested in trying to do something for themselves, trying to reach their goals, trying to trying to pull those dreams out, just trying to move forward and do something, enhance something back to the world that's going to provide value for others. Those are the things that I, I create businesses around. And those are the people who I love to be around because they motivate me to go back in and do something special so that I can help somebody else. I think that's why we've always connected, no matter what part of our journey we're on, we're cut from that same cloth of really wanting to see others just blossom into their greatness. So I, I'm with you. I was just thinking to myself like, yes, yes, you're speaking my language because it's so amazing. That feeling of almost euphoria when you see somebody start off their business with just a thought and then you see them doing things, you're like, yes, yes, we are in here. We're doing it. So I, I commend you. I, I'm with you on that all, all the way. Um, so part of what what we do on this series is talk about our hurdles. And I talked to you a little bit before we got started about the fact that I want the audience to be able to really see themselves and all of our guests and be able to say, you know what, if little old me, wherever I am and whatever situation I am, you know, is struggling, hey, Elliot Eddy, this fabulous entrepreneur, he, was go he went through the same thing I went through and now he's successful. So do tell us, you know, maybe one or two short stories of hurdles you've encountered in your personal life and or business that you've had to go through and somehow they have led to your current success. Oh, absolutely. You know, hurdles are a thing of life. Number one, it's, uh, you know, getting over the di disappointment. So anytime you're starting a business, and I'll get specific in a second, but anytime you're starting a business, what you're really doing, an entrepreneur is someone who solves a problem. It's a person that sees a problem and they solve it. They provide value to either a group of pay people through a product or service or a message. Uh, anytime you do that, you know, you're also going to be going outside out of yourself because along the road you're going to be doing something that you haven't done before you're going to be trying to do it with people who don't know you and a lot of times who are not really as for you as you would think they would be uh you will have to be going against the current and you know in those times you really have to have number one you have to have some self-determination but really you just have to have enough love for yourself to say even when i fall you know, I'm going to get back up and I'm going to try again. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've, I've made, I've produced movies, independent films, and mm -hmm. I've, you know, I can't tell you how many times I cried on the set just because, you know, uh, I felt like I was putting everything into it, but I wasn't really, you know, the people around me weren't, weren't really adding to it. You know, they were taking advantage of it. Uh, I felt like, you know, at times that no matter what I did, it seems like everything would work against me. You know, Murphy's mm -hmm. Law, anything that can go bad will go bad. Uh, you know, there were times when I that I would really put, you know, I'm putting my money and my energy into it, but I'm not really feeling that reciprocation from it. You know, I'm not really getting what I, you know, and it, it, it disturbs you and it makes you cry and it makes you want to say stop. You know, I probably had, you know, for the four, the well, right now I have six businesses, but for those six, those six that are actually doing okay now, I've probably gone through maybe about 30, 35 businesses that failed miserably. Um, you know, the big thing is when you're, when you're becoming an entrepreneur is you have to understand that, you know, sometimes there's going to be times when nobody's going to push but you. You know, it's going to seem like you're all alone. It's going to seem like you can't do it. It's going to seem like everything is going against you. And those are your moments of truth. Those are the moments where you have to say, you know, okay, take a breath, step back. And just say, you know what, I can get through this. Let me figure out what the issue is. You know, what is the problem? What do I need? And sometimes you just might have to just stop and cry and let it out. You know, let that frustration out, let those tears out and just let it do what it does. And then gather yourself and say, you know what, I'm still going to go forward. An entrepreneur is somebody who's just not going to give up. You know, it's just going forward. It's just trying to find another way to skin you. They say that um, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I don't know why people need all these ways to skin cats, but the point is still valid. You know, there's always a way to get something done. You know, you, sometimes you have to be creative. Sometimes you have to accept help. And sometimes you have to realize there will be no help. So you'll have to do the work, but it's okay. You just continue forward and you will make it to the end as long as you don't stop. As long as you continue forward and you believe in yourself, you will make it to the end. I love that. I love you said, do what it does. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I've had do those moments do. where you just like, you know what? Yep. I tell, tell myself, I said, you know what? You're going to have a pity party. You have, I look at the clock and say, okay, you got it. One hour. <laughs> let the tears out. Let your body just have, do what it has to do. And then get up, brush yourself off and keep going. So I know you talked a little bit about the fact that you, you know, had some businesses that didn't succeed. 
And, and I love that you said that because people are like, like you had to laugh, yeah. People don't realize they just see the success. And sometimes they even think, oh, it happened overnight. Look, oh, look at him. Um, but they don't know how much blood, sweat, and tears had to go into it. So it, has there ever been a time where you said, you know what? I'm done with this. I wipe my hands of it. I'm quitting. I'm going back to working for the man. <laughs> has there ever been that moment? And if so, what did you do to get out of that? Well, for me, I'm, you know, it's a little bit different. So there's been times that I've wanted to quit and there's been things that I've, that I've actually stopped and gave up on and moved on to something else. Sometimes you, sometimes you have to know when it's time to make a move and, and make an adjustment and move somewhere else, or at least focus your energy somewhere else for a time. Now for me, it never really came back to me wanting to go back and get a job because that's, you know, I cannot earn, no one, there's no job that will pay pay me what I'm worth. You know, in my mind, there's, there's nobody that's going to pay for all that I bring to the table, for all that I am capable of doing. There's nobody that wants to pay me to do that. And for myself, since I didn't have that, uh, I didn't have that record, that, that track record in corporate America, there's no one that's going to pay me decently anyway, you know, and it's, it's, you know, it's a lot out here. So for me, that wasn't an option. For me, it was about making it happen. You know, I, to me, I had to make it happen. Fortunately, I was in a situation, my wife was, my wife had my back and uh, she, you know, because of her, it allowed me to have some flexibility. But for me, you know, it had, I had to make it work. I had to make it work. There was, there was no other option. There was years that it did not work. There was years that it did not work. There was years that, you know, I could look at myself and say, man, I am. I'm a bum. I, you know, I'm not working. I'm not, I'm not doing anything. It's just, you know, it's not working. I'm just, I, I can't do it. I'm just not able to do it. But after I got through that and after I got over that and that time passed and I watched the movie or something, um, I had to start again. You know, I went back. Some ideas I gave up on and charted something else, but I, I always wanted to, I always wanted to do the entrepreneurial thing because, you know, that's, that's who I am. That's how I give. That's how I give my very best to this world is through using my brain and solving problems and adding value. There was no other way around it. I feel you. I love that you shouted out your wife. I've met her. She's an amazing woman. <laughs> amazing. Yeah. That support system is strong over there with you. So I commend her for being there because it is hard to, one, watch a loved one struggle when you know they they have the greatness, but also to stand by them and say, you know what, I got your back while you figure it out until, you know, we get to the success. And then I love that you said there was no other altern alternative because that's what I tell people. They're like, well, I can't believe you still kept going. Well, I have a whole degree in the medical field that I can't, I can no longer work in because of my health. If I don't do this, then what am I going to do? Wait tables. I, I, you know, I'm quite overqualified for McDonald's. <laughs> so, so it's yeah. like, yeah, this is what I have to do. I have to make a lane for myself where there would be no other lane. So I love that you decided, you know what, I'm going to make a lane for myself because there is no other lane for me. So that that's amazing. You know, I think a, a lot of people need to hear that. What are we saying? You know something, there was a, there's something that I've always taken to heart. Now, back in the day, Arsenio, had, Arsenio Hall had a talk show that I used to watch. This was back in the 90s. And he had Eddie Murphy on his couch one day, and they were having an interview. And Eddie Murphy said something that I hold dear to this day. And it, it sums up the way I think about this. Um, Arsenio Hall asked him, he said, well, you know, what if you tried this acting thing, you know, and it didn't work out? You know, what was your plan B? And Eddie looked at him and he said, there's no plan B. There's a plan A. If you have a plan B, that means you don't believe in your plan A. And that okay. always stuck with me. So I had a plan A and that was it. There was, there was no plan B. I like that. Look, I, I've, I've asked my family for different things. They said, what's your plan? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. <laughs> like, what's your fallback? But yeah, you have to believe in yourself because you don't want that, that seed of doubt to get in your mind and fester. And then you say, you know what? I don't have to go that hard today because if it doesn't work, then I'll go do this. Like, no, if you really believe in yourself, if you know that you can do something, then you need to stick to it until you see the results. Um, so I love that you mentioned Eddie Murphy, Arsen Arsenio Hall. Do you have any other influences or influ people who have like motivated you throughout your journey as an entrepreneur? You know, it's interesting. You know, I, I don't have like a lot of idols. There are a lot of people that I respect. You know, I respect people who go in and they give it their all, they do what they do and they become the best of 
their particular their particular area, whether we're talking about science, whether we're talking about uh, schooling, whether we're talking about athletics. You know, I appreciate people who go in and do it, even, even other entrepreneurs. You know, there can be someone that just started out in entrepreneurship who is doing their very best. And I, you know, I look up to them. I appreciate them because I know these things don't come hard. These things, these things don't come easy. Uh, as far as a specific role model, I wouldn't really say I have one of those. Mine's is, uh, it's just about an attitude, a mindset of, of just going for broke. It's just, you know, just continue going. And I, and you know, and I, my heart reaches out to and it connects with people who have that same, uh, that same mindset. Awesome. Yeah. Like minds connect. And it's really good to have people that think like you do. Because I always tell people when you become an entrepreneur, especially with your first business, you really need to find other entrepreneurs to connect with because the way we think is not the typical. And if you only have people that are, you know, punching the time clock and that's all they know, they are not going to understand the risk that you're about to take to make your dreams come true. So for those new entrepreneurs out there, do you have maybe one tip that you would give them from all your years of experience to help them on their entrepreneur journey? Absolutely. So entrepreneurs are visionary. No matter what it is that you're doing, you are a visionary. So that means that you work a little bit differently. That means you're, the way that you look and see things is a little bit different than the normal. Everybody can't do entrepreneurship. I always say everybody should be an entrepreneur, but everybody can't do entrepreneurship. You have to have a certain mindset. You have to have a certain worth at work ethic. So for you, for all of those who are entrepreneurs, I would say, first of all, when you see the vision, you see the vision because that's something inside of you that's gifted to you that you can accomplish. It's something that you see inside of you. It's even besides your mind, it's almost like your spirit. When you see it, you see an end result. You see it done. You usually start from the beginning, but you see the end result. So just understand that you can get there. You see it because it's possible. So as you're going along the road, uh, no matter what, 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 uh, what things you come up against, what walls or barriers that come up against you, just understand that those things are temporary and they're movable. You can get through it. There's nothing that you cannot do. Just make sure that you don't let other people's thoughts and other people's doubts and other people's words discourage you from doing what you see. If they didn't, if they're not doing it, that's because they can't see it. And that because that be, that's because you have the vision and they don't. I'm not knocking them, but I'm just saying that if they could see it, they would be doing it too. So don't allow them to stop you from doing what you see yourself doing, from getting to that end. And then one other thing, just make sure you understand that uh, a failure, that really in entrepreneurship, there really is no failure. So I'll give you an example. Let's say you're an event planner and you know how to plan beautiful events. You know you know how to play beautiful events, but you plan your first event, nobody comes, right? So you say, okay, well, I'm going to go, I'm going to do it again. And you plan a second event that's incredible, but nobody comes. And let's say you do this a third time, you, you put the most beautiful event together, but nobody comes. Does that, does that mean that you're a failure and you're not good at event planning? Absolutely not, because you had the vision, you knew to do it. What it means is that there's a piece of information that you don't have that you need. That piece of information would be marketing. You need to know how learn how to market to get the people in the seats because you got everything else straight. So understand with entrepreneurship, there is no failure. All you're really doing is pointing out the parts or the the parts of information that you don't have solid yet. So if you want to increase, if you want your 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 planning or your product to go further, then there's just more information that you need to incorporate and that you need to utilize and put into effect. That'll help that go. So don't ever get, don't ever, you know, don't ever uh, fall back on your dreams. Don't ever think you can't do it. Don't ever think that you're a failure. Just realize that those are pieces of information that you need to get in order that you can succeed for the whole picture. That, that Boy, that was wisdom right there because I, I think about that all the time. People get so discouraged. Like I said, that first event I had, oh my goodness. I was like, oh, <laughs> poor me. I thought people were going to come. Like I made the flyers. I did all of that. And then to look in hindsight and say, look at me now, years later, now I have a marketing agency. And I before I couldn't get two people to come through a door to, to a free event. 
And it's just like, wow, you know, and again, you're right. People were, you know, you're missing just that little bit. It's like, oh, you don't know how to make a website. That's what you're missing. Or you don't know how to jazz up your um, image or what have you, your branding. You don't know how to make a logo. Those little things, once you learn them or get someone in your corner who has those skills, you'd be surprised how much you can accomplish in such a short time. So thank you for that, the wisdoms of Nugget that you just dropped on us there. And look, I know you're about to take take off. So I'm going to ask this question. I'm just going to jump back. But because I, look, I already know you do a lot. But please do tell us because you're a man of many talents. Um, this, your business has many pieces. But tell us um, some of your products and services so that if some of our listeners out there are interested, they know what you offer and they can come to you and get your amazing services. Oh, absolutely. I love to talk about it. So I will talk about three things right off the bat. Uh, well, everybody knows this is tax season. So I have a tax preparation business that I've been doing for 11 years called Superior Tax. Uh, you can reach and I'll put my, uh, my email down there because now since it is COVID, you know, we're doing things a little bit differently. Uh, so we also do things online or if you have questions about your taxes, you know, feel free to contact me because especially if you're an entrepreneur, because there are a lot of things that you can take advantage of as an entrepreneur using uh, using your business to lower your to lower your ex, your expenses by you know using deductions. What type of things you can actually uh, deduct? If you have an office in your house, you know there's certain things that you can deduct, like your utilities. You know, it's a lot of information that entrepreneurs don't usually know because a lot of people don't just tell you these things. And you know, quite honestly, a lot of people don't know them. Uh, the second thing is I have a board game that I've invented. It is called the Entrepreneur Game. It is the world's first and only STEM accredited entrepreneur board game. It teaches entrepreneurship for players, usually for children 12 and up. Uh, it teaches you entrepreneurship, how to start and grow your own home base of brick and mortar business through marketing, investing, branding, budgeting, negotiating, critical thinking, decision making, and everything that entrepreneurs go through. So if you're an entrepreneur or you're trying to train your child, uh, an entrepreneur, give them an entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial mindset. That's definitely something that you might want to look at. That's on our website, educationalgamestore.com. Uh, educationalgamestore.com. Take a look. There's videos in it. It's just been, uh, it was just, uh, we just had an article done on us in Newsweek magazine on November 16th, and it was designated as the best in STEM for 2021, the best STEM product, one of the best STEM products under $50 that you can get for your child. And we had some other things, you know, Forbes Magazine, Yahoo Finance, Black Enterprise, they've all done articles on this. And we have a couple other things. So it's a very good game. And then the third thing that I would say is I have a brand new, uh, my own cheese, my own brand of cheesecake pans <laughs> It's called the Grand Toque. They are nine inch spring form cheesecake pans. And if you don't know what a spring form pan is, you know, those pans that those round pans that you can take apart and the bottom falls off. It's a two piece pan. So that way you can make a cake or a cheesecake or a quiche or a pie, whatever you want to make. You can take the sides off. So the sides are perfect, but it'll still have that bottom part on there that sits on there. So those are cheesecake pans. And I have some incredible ones made of uh, carbonated steel. So they're stainless steel and they're doing very well. They're on Amazon. If you go to amazon.com and just look up the Grand Toque, you will find those right there. Uh, those are the three products that I am pushing right now. Outside of that, I have a, you know, most of the other businesses are self-serving businesses. So, you know, I do a little real estate investment. I still do some film editing. You know, I have a few books out, a couple of movies. Uh, so I'm still doing those things, but those are the three products, you know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to slow down. I only have six he's right like, now. He's like, yeah, you know, I do a little editing. <laughs> you know, I got a few, he said a few books. I, I remember even a few years ago, a few books is a table full, guys. He's the author of multiple <laughs> books. Because I think you even released a book, was it last year? I, think I, I did, it was, that yeah, it was less than six months ago. Yeah. Uh, that book is called Blueprint for Prosperity. And it is a, it is for a Christian, it's a biblical look at entrepreneurship according to biblical standards. So it'll show you entrepreneurship, but it'll really give you, if you are uh, if you are into the Bible, if you are someone who believes in God, there's certain things that he has put in process here. And if you're, if you're able to do things according to, you know, the way he operates, it almost guarantees you how the outcome would be, you know, how to move in the spiritual as, as well as the natural so that, you know, all of your, all of the things that you're supposed to do or you're here to do will be realized. Yes, I think I'm going to 
book in a drawer here. I was like, I know you have that. And look, I know I need to get my pans. I told Ellie, I said, I'm going to buy those pans. I don't bake. I'm just going to give them to my mom who, who does all the baking, has her own little baking business. But I was like, I'm going to get those pans because I'm going to support you the way you support others. Uh, but thank you so much for being up here. Before we go, please do tell us, you mentioned um, a few websites, but tell us again how my audience can get in touch with you. Absolutely. So you can go either go on the website and you'll be able, there'll be a contact form that's educationalgamestore.com or you can actually email me directly. Uh, my email is ceo at eespeaks.com. That's E as in Elliot, E as in Eddie, speaks with an S, dot com, CEO. Uh, so if you have any questions, you know, just feel free to email me, whether it's about, you know, starting a business, whether it's about taxes, just, you know, something you've seen here. Um, you know, information is hard, is a hard thing to come by. And it's what I like. You know, my wife says I give it out too freely sometimes. Uh, and I don't always, you know, charge it. You know, but the, I, the idea is, you know, I'll, like I said, when I was a child, I think that there should be a certain amount of information that is accessible to people and you won't find that online. And my idea is, you know, there's enough out here for everybody. So I want to see you do extremely well because by you doing well, you're going to touch a segment of society that needs it. And who knows that segment of society just might be me or, you know, my, my friends or niece or nephew. So, you know, let's help each other out. So I'm going to give you some information. So go ahead and contact me. Let me know what's on your mind and let's see what we can do to help you grow. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being up here. I, it's always a pleasure to get to talk to you. And I learn something new every time, every time without <laughs> fail. And I just want to shout out the entrepreneur game. My kiddos are, what I had to think how old they are, what, nine and two, 13, two, yeah, two 13 year olds. But my little one, um like the game when it first came out so that was what a year or two two years ago and he or was only ago. yeah he was only seven at the time and he still could grasp the concepts and since then they have had a successful um slime business and my son has decided that he wants to have a taco truck i said when you turn 16 okay. I'll invest in that taco truck for you and then we have a kid okay wants to sell bows she's already learned how to make it so guys you don't have to wait till, till they're our age and it, you know now we're like ah uh, you know we, we got to try to figure this out invest in your kids get the game i can't stress that enough it's a family game so it doesn't have to be something your kids do by themselves you guys can play i always tell people it's a mix of kind of like monopoly life with a big hit of entrepreneurship so it teaches so much you can pick different tracks that you want to take it's literally just like starting a business and the things that are up there really teach the kids at their level how to be successful entrepreneurs like, I can't say it enough. I love that game. And I'm so happy that that resource is out here for kids. Because when I was young, I never knew that was even an option. To be an entrepreneur, who? What? <laughs> never. Mm -hmm. It was go to college, get a good job, retire, get your benefits. It was never you could live your greatness, you could follow your passion. So now these kids have that, that ability to think that way. So I applaud you for thinking thinking of that, you know, just having that vision, like you said, and making that available to the kiddos. I will definitely be putting all your links down below. Guys, if you are interested in any of the products that you heard about tonight or today, whenever you're watching this, please do check out his links. If you want to get in touch with him, definitely do so. If you have any follow-up questions, if you're watching this on YouTube, definitely put them down in the comments below. If you're listening to the podcast, Check the bio, check the description. We'll have some of this information there. But as always, thank you so much, Elliot, for, for gracing us with your presence, sir. Next time we do something, he's going to be like a billionaire and I'm not going to be able to book him. <laughs> but guess me. Yeah, he's going to be way up there because, look, he's so, he doesn't, it's not even enough time to talk about all the things he's done. I remember when you were competing in the world championships of public <laughs> speaking, sir. We didn't even get to right? talk about what a dynamic, show-stopping speaker this man is how he can move crowds with his words guys please book him if he if he says he does workshops you need to book him for a workshop a keynote because he is phenomenal and every time he pre just graces us graces us with his presence he drops gems so thank you so much for being up here thank you all for listening guys remember i rock you rock we all rock and i will see you next episode